a little introduction to Abbey Port while I take Charlie for a little walk so uh, we'll just have a little history lesson while we carry on right? Abbey Port oh. how long have we been coming here then? Well, Abbey Park is a public park in Leicester, England, through which the River Soar flows. It is owned and managed by Leicester City Council. It was opened in 1882 on the floodplain of the River Soar and expanded in 1932 to include the area west of the river that had formerly been the medieval St Mary's Abbey. Still bounded by large medieval walls, the park includes the archaeological sites of the Abbey and the ruins of Cavendish House along with a wide range of decorative and recreational parkland features. In 1876 Leicester Town Council bought 57 acres of marshy ground between the river and the canal from the Earl of Dysart in order to develop flood prevention plans. Planning for this first incarnation of the park was underway by 1879 as part of designs by the borough surveyors for the relief of flooding in the area. Hmm. Must have had a lot of flooding there. However the design for the park itself was opened up to a competition. That's strange. The winning design with its bandstand, rustic bridges and planted gardens was the work of William Barron, a celebrated landscape designer. It was Leicester's first public park of any significant size and was open on uh, when was it open? Oh, yeah. 29th of May 1882 by the Prince and Princess of Wales, an event commemorated by an ornate plaque at the Abbey Park Road entrance. The park was created in an area that had previously been described as marshy ground in a poor district. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that sums up Leicester. At a cost of over £40,000. The works included the widening and deepening of the river over a length of around a mile, with the excavated earth used to create mounds within the park as well as the construction of stone weirs and locks. Three new bridges were constructed crossing the river an artificial lake was created and over 33,000 trees were planted. Excavations as part of the work discovered remains of animals including elephants and rhinoceroses. Now I wonder what they were doing here. The resulting park occupied 57 acres of land between the River Saw and the Grand Union Canal. Two lodges designed by architect Mr J Tate were built at the Abbey Park Road entrance to the park. Although the new park was called Abbey Park, the site of the Abbey itself, bounded by substantial medieval masonry and brick walls, was not within the park but was in agricultural land on the other side of the River Soar. The exact location of the Abbey was unknown with no standing remains other than the boundary walls and the ruins of the 16th century Cavendish House. Archaeological investigations of a limited nature began in the 1920s and popular enthusiasm was fuelled by the 1922 discoveries in Egypt of Tutankhamun's tomb and an hope that Cardinal Wolsey's tomb might be similarly discovered. Anyway, after assorted modest excavations, the 32-acre Abbey ground site was donated to the city by the Earl of Dysart at the end of 1925. Several years of preliminary works and sporadic attempts to pin down the site of the Abbey buildings were followed by more thorough work oh, yeah. undertaken in 1929 and 1930. With the rise in the unemployment culminating in the Great Depression, the City Council attempted to alleviate local poverty by employing a team of workmen to clear the pernicious weeds from the overgrown site. And the architect, W.K. Bedingfield, 
was able to utilize this process to also search for and then uncover the buried foundations of the abbey buildings. A variety of graves were found but no magnificent tomb of the sort popularly hoped for. Having exposed and mapped the extent of the abbey church and a variety of monastic buildings the workforce built low walls to mark out the foundations and pier bases. They also carried out extensive repairs to the stonework and brickwork of the medieval boundary walls, particularly along the north and western sides of the site. Traditionally ascribed to the Abbot Penner and Abbot Clune, paths were laid out across the grounds, tennis courts were built and a large oval was levelled for use as a cricket pitch as you would do in England and a new stone bridge in the classical style was built across the river saw to link the two parts of the park. Despite the absence of a tomb the abbey ruins received a memorial slab to Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. He died while en route from York to London on the 29th of November 1530. The statue of him also stands next to the park's cafe. Alongside the site of the 12th century Leicester Abbey, which was marked out with low stone walls, are the substantial ruins of Cavendish House, built in the 17th century by William Cavendish, the first Earl of Devonshire, incorporating the Abbey Gate House, and by tradition built using stone from the Abbey. The house was used by Charles I after the siege of Leicester during the English Civil War in 1645. After he left, his soldiers set fire to it, leaving oh the house gutted. The charred stone window frame is still visible today. Facilities and events. Well, I don't see really many going off in Leicester, prob probably apart from the fair now and again. Anyway, the park now has an area of 89 acres and as formal gardens, a sensory garden, a boating lake, and a model boating lake. I think we're spinning that one a bit. The boating lake and the model boating lake, I think, are the same thing. And a miniature railway operated by Leicester Society of Model Engineers since 1949. The visitor centre, cafe, children's play area. Who is an early I don't think that's ever been filled for years. Pets Corner, I don't think I visited that for a while. I don't think the tennis courts are hardly ever used. And the bowling ring, I've seen seen a few people bowling down there and the bandstand. I remember when I was a kid that was always being used, the bandstand with the Leicestershire Regiment playing down there. And the park has regularly won the Green Flag Award. That's a national award made annually to parks which reach a high standard. The park was the site of an annual flower show dating back to the 19th century, which included a swimming gala and evolved into the Abbey Park show in the 1940s, with the addition a range of entertainment and displays. It continued until 1995, and no wonder I can't remember it, when it was abolished due to falling attendances and rising costs. That's a damn shame. Although a return is periodically discussed, yeah, I bet it is and all. It was also the site of the pageant of Leicester, held in 1932. The Abbey Park Festival is an annual music festival which was held for over 20 years, from 1981. Ooh. An annual bonfire and fireworks event is held in the park around Guy Fawkes night. Yeah, I've been to a couple of them. It's always been muddy. And you come, <laughs> try, try and get in your car with about two stone of mud around your feet. Anyway, that's that little history lesson on that. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And back to the footage of the park. And just end up finishing off with charts. Bye all.